Uh, but we turn now to, uh, I think, one of the more troubling and underreported stories in the world today, and certainly troubling and unsupported, uh, unreported in uh, New Zealand. And we're just working on some technical issues. We've got two people we're going to talk to, two Iranian women, and we're going to talk about Iran. Yesterday, the government announced 22 members of the Iranian security forces had received travel bans following the death of Iranian Kurdish woman Masha Amini and the violent response to subsequent protests. New Zealand has previously suspended its human rights dialogue with Iran and the Prime Minister has also signed a letter calling for Iran to be removed from the United Nations rights body, the Commission on the Status of Women, which seems highly ironic. Uh, highly ironic, uh, all things uh, considered. Uh, but is New Zealand, even with that, taking the appropriate stance on the ongoing human rights abuses in Iran, which seems to be undergoing a sustained and on one side peaceful revolution and one would hope is going to change? Um, there's a new group in New Zealand called Iranian Women in New Zealand, uh, and the founder of that uh, movement, Farah Amin, uh, thinks the travel ban announcement is disappointing. And she also has uh, a, um, the chair of that organisation is Hana Habibi. And now what have we got? We've got Farah Amin who joins us by video link. Farah, oh, oh that's Marsha Marks. We've got Marsha Marks. Uh, okay, we've got Marsha Marks on the, media, on the video link and we've got Hana Habibi, I presume. On the um, on the on the phone, is that right, Hannah? You're on the phone. Uh, yes. Hi. Okay, and Marsha, <laughs> we've got you. Sorry, and Marsha, you you were you were uh, yeah you were standing in for fun. Good morning. And Marsha, we've yes. got you on the video link. Okay, and thank you both for joining us. Look, that was progress, wasn't it? Yesterday, our government banning twenty two members of the security forces wasn't that a good thing? Aren't we punching above our weight? and standing up to the evil Iranian regime or not? Absolutely not. Um, it's, it's too little, too late anyway. We are so far behind the rest of the world and our international allies in doing any meaningful action. The, the action taken yesterday is fairly pointless because these 20... Um, leaders of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard and the Iranian regime are not going to be traveling to New Zealand. And if they were, that it will be most likely to be their family members. What we're interested in was um, sanctions that would stop for uh, them and their family members from coming to New Zealand, that would look at asset freezes if they have assets in New Zealand. And it's only 22 to people. So it's not a sanction, it's just a travel ban and I don't think any of those leaders are looking at a summer holiday in New Zealand anytime soon. Okay, so uh, Hannah, it's a, it's a piece of window dressing, diplomatic window dressing for domestic consumption. Mm, uh, I don't know how to actually refer to it. It's maybe ticking a box or I hope I hope to see it as a first step of many more meaningful steps coming and happening soon. Um, I hope that I'm right and I hope it's not just ticking a box and just sending a message that we are doing something. And while actually it's really not practical, neither in um, showing any um, strong condemnation or consequences to that brutal regime in Iran, nor in protecting Autora New Zealand from their reach. We have mentioned this many times that we are vulnerable. All our um, like-minded partners, international partners, have done much more meaningful um, have taken much more, many more meaningful measures to protect their own countries from the reach of these resourceful, brutal and ruthless people. Mm. These chief commanders are not those who are the threat. These chief commanders are not those who are sent to carry out some, um, I don't know, for, foreign interference in any other country. They are the figure. <laughs> so this is, I think, very clear. Middle, um, uh, middle commanders, middle officials, even low-rank officials, 
those are those who are usually used and those are those who we actually should discourage to join such a terrorist um, body for very little gain in compared to these high rank officials that they right. have. Right. So it is the, the elite that, that you're talking about targeting. Look, I want to talk about your group, Iranian Women in New Zealand. We've talked to Gilda Kirkpatrick on, the, on this program. I know that Gora's uh, Gariman is uh, a former Iranian, Iranian refugee. She is a member of our parliament, though unfortunately the Green Party have a ban on talking to the platform for some weird reason. But it strikes me that it is Iranian women uh, abroad who are very much at the forefront of that. And indeed, if you look at what is happening in Iran, the most brutal suppression in that regime is preserved and directed against women. And I find that really, really interesting. Tell us about your group, who you represent, and how many Iranian women there are in New Zealand. Because I don't know if it's something about you, but boy, you guys can do this pretty well. You can you can talk well, and you seem to have a culture of advocacy and outspokenness, which is quite remarkable. Um, well, so, so I let Hannah oh, take that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because I don't see Masa, so I don't know when she's gonna. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Farouk I mean, um, our friend and the founder of uh, Iranian Women in New Zealand, has started this um, charitable trust, uh, I believe, to just give a platform to like-minded um, women from Iranian community to speak up and just to connect, which came handy extremely. Uh, at this point, I was not a member before three months ago, so I became a member three months ago. Um, so I'm not quite sure when it started, and unfortunately, Farouk today couldn't join us because of some mm. um, a last moment um, issue, family um, yep. yeah issues. So uh, at the moment, the group, uh, the channel on Telegram has 458 members. Um, they're very active women. As you can see, we are just, um, we are a reflection of what's happening in Iran. And um, this, is an, this is a women-led movement in Iran that I guess by now is clear to the world. Mm. And uh, you are being referred to the fact that we can articulate, articulate and mm. we can um, speak. The reason is that the Iranian community of Autora New Zealand is really highly educated. Most mm. of us, most of us have come here to continue our education and later fell in love with New Zealand and stayed here. And so many of us left for left Iran for this, for this exact reason, reason yeah. for the yeah for the violation of uh, women's rights to such an extent. Uh, while we're not oppressed people, we're not like um, people who can take it. We are educated. We know what we deserve, and the same applies to women in Iran. Yeah, Marsha, what I think more? If you, yeah, yeah Marsha. Sorry, no, no, if you. Su- if you oppress any part of the population for as long as the Islamic Republic has done, you are going to get this type of pushback. This is a gender apartheid regime. The women well, are... Good team. Yes. Well, the thing is, I mean, they are treating women as if I die in an Iranian court, my life is worth half of a man. My, If I was doing a witness statement, my witness statement is worth half of a man. So it has to be two women this is one man. I cannot ride a bike. I cannot sing in public. I cannot dance. I cannot be a judge. I cannot hold, I cannot be a president. So, you know, th- this has been going on for 43 years. And it's important to understand that there's a difference between the culture of Iranian people, which is rather progressive, mm. and this backwards, um, archaic, Islamic ruling no, medieval. occupying our country. It's yes, medieval. Um, yes. I love that term gender apartheid. And if we put that in an historical context, and I am someone who grew up at the time of the Springbok tour and when this country wa- was, was vitally interested in what happened in South Africa, I had the privilege of meeting Nelson Mandela on a number of occasions. And I just think if, we, if the world looked at Iran as an apartheid regime, and so interesting that phrase, we would be doing a hell of a lot more. There would be a hell of a lot more pressure on that regime than there is uh, is right now. What more would you, Marsha, like our government to do? 
I, I couldn't agree more. And I think for a very long time, the world has seen um, this regime as reformable, that it's going to be fixing its issues. But the thing is, killing people, oppressing women and men and ethnic minorities and the rainbow community is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. It's not going to be reformed. And I think that's the thing that the Iranian community across the world is trying to get the Western leaders to understand. You cannot fix something that is broken to its core. And what we want to see is very forceful diplomatic response. I want to look at the Mykonos murders in the early 90s when Iranian regime was killing Iranian Kurdish dissidents in Germany. And what the... Um, what the Western countries did, they all recalled their ambassadors and from Iran for consultation. And they said, until Iran stops killing Iranians in European soil, they will not be returning to Iran. They also summoned Iranian ambassadors for questioning. We want to see the Iranian ambassador that is sitting nicely, safely in Wellington to be called for questioning to be told in strong terms that New Zealand does not accept this, these human rights violations. I want to see our government uphold our nation's commitment to human rights. And I think we're, we're definitely not doing that at the moment. We're so far behind our allies, the five I countries. And frankly, I think the announcement on the 12th of um, travel ban came straight after Australia had done a big sanction on these guys using the Magnitsky um, law. So, you know, then we were the last ones standing with no action against the round. So, so we're dragging we had our to do heels. something quick. Yeah. 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 And it's really odd because New Zealand has got a reputation for backing human rights, for standing for human rights. And to say that New Zealand is, you know, pushing for the expelling of Iran from the Women's Rights Commission at the UN, this is not correct. The correct thing is that for years, women rights activists have been pushing for Iran. I mean, Iran should not have been even accepted to that council. It's, it's a, making a mockery of the whole thing for a country that is raping women, raping children, female girls in prisons to be in the Commission on the Status of Women. Mm. So we're glad that New Zealand is supporting that. But New Zealand has not been leading that. We have not been leading anything when it comes to Iran. All right. Um, Marsha and Hannah, what is going on in Iran at the moment? It is difficult getting reliable media out of there. Um, and it's not getting, I, I think, the coverage it probably deserves as a story in mainstream media or, or certainly in my news feed. So what is the situation on the ground there as far as you two can establish right now? Well, the situation is, First of all, it is a revolution, and now we should give it credit for what it is. It is we a revolution. Stop calling it. Yeah, we should stop calling it uprising. Or like, it is a revolution. And what's happening, unfortunately, is the latest and most concerning news from Iran is the, this execution of protesters. They have started to carry out the execution of protesters, uh, who, in a very short period, in a short trial trial period, rushed trial period without uh, due procedures, without allowing them to have a, a lawyer, without allowing them even to appeal to a sentence that they give them. And uh, this is something that we really need to realize the regime is capable of, mass executions. I've been reached out by many community members asking me not to call it execution because in, in their opinion, that, that has a procedure at least that needs to be fulfilled. And this is official killing. I'm still going to call it execution because there is a rope and there is somebody in a cell being mentally tortured and eventually killed. So I have to pass that message. We have more than 18,000 people in detention arrested recently over the past three months after the um, beginning of this movement, which later turned to a revolution. They have already started carrying out these executions over the past three days. Four days, they've executed two young men, one 23-year-old Mohsen Shekari, one 22-year-old um, Majid Reza Rahnavard, who they hanged yesterday. 
at this moment, 80 more are at, the Im at imminent risk of getting executed. And what we need to understand is that the regime is absolutely capable of carrying out mass murder and mass executions. In 1988, they have killed some number between 3,000 to 30,000 political prisoners. And the world didn't do as much as they needed back then. Now this is the social media era. We have to do everything we can as people. And we expect governments who are aware at this point to do some, to take some meaningful measures. These young lives are at, at imminent risk of getting executed, of getting killed, or they're facing official killing. They are, um, the, the guy who was killed yesterday, Majid Reza Rahnabad, the whole process was 28 days for him, from his arrest to standing trial, to getting sentenced, to they, they definitely didn't give him a chance to appeal, obviously, and then they hanged him. So. The situation is extremely critical, and we need to understand that people are not giving up. People, everything, every every um, harsh stance that the regime in Iran is taking is just forcing them and um, getting them angrier and making them angrier, and they continue their fight. That means this can go on for a long time, and every day, every day of... Um, silence from international community. Every day of delayed uh, meaningful action from the international um, democracy's leaders means more and more people getting killed in Iran. Mm. Uh, uh, you two, of, well, I, I need to ask this question of both uh, uh, you, Hannah, and Marsha. You, you still have family uh, in Iran, and what does your yes. activism here, does that and it's a serious question, does that represent a threat to them? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I'll go first, Massa, and then please you continue. I have been communicating this many times here with officials, with people um, from governments we speak with. Absolutely, we are a target now. New Zealand didn't have any activists against the regime till three months ago. Now it has a good number of activists who are loud, who, who are not hiding their identities and are doing everything in their power to be a reflection and to be the voice of people inside Iran and to help them. Absolutely, we are at risk even here with the regime having an embassy, an open embassy here and all resources at their hands and uh, political immunity. And our families back in Iran, of course, they are at risk. Okay, uh, Marsha, have you got family back there? Yes, I do, and I have asked them all to disown me, remove me from all their social media and um, chat groups, and if anybody knocks on the door to just say she's gone mad and we don't talk to her anymore. Because oh, they I'm, have to deny you, is what you're saying. They have to deny me, yes, and as Hannah said, I'm definitely, I'm a mum, I've got two young children, I'm worried for their safety and my own, because this... Uh, regime has done assassinations overseas. The, our counterparts in Europe and in Canada and US are getting their threats and I'm sure it will start happening in New Zealand as well. Um, and we have been asking a number of times for um, our community to be protected, to be met with. We haven't had meetings with the officials, we've had meetings with the foreign minister, but so far we don't know where they're getting their advice. I think that's one of the things that is really concerning to us is the advice that our government seems to be getting is dated and it's inaccurate. And um, we have offered multiple times to meet, to, offer, to give them from underground advice, both within the community in New Zealand and from Iran. We cannot afford another terrorist attack in this country. You look at what the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, the IRGC, is doing in the region. It's funding Hezbollah, it's carrying out terrorist activities in Syria, in Yemen, and it's supplying drones and, and possibly missiles to Russia to kill innocent Ukrainians. Yeah. This is, you know, we, we have backed um, Ukraine so much. Well, what's the difference? Iran is Russia's strongest ally at the moment in that war. Even if we go with that standard, Iran should be getting the same treatment this regime should be getting the same treatment as Putin and Russia have got. But somehow we seem to be so conservative when it comes to Islamic Republic and they are dangerous. 
Look, you two, I want to thank you very much indeed for your bravery and for joining us uh, this morning. And I, for one, think that you do deserve and, and our government could be more clear-cut, could be more courageous uh, on this issue in, in future. Um, though one cannot help but uh, not feel pessimistic, but feel that the road to peace, unlike in South Africa, and I love this term, gender apartheid, um, um, without a regime that is prepared to negotiate or see the error of its ways, one imagines the path to reconciliation might be more troublesome and more deadly um, than it was uh, in, in South Africa. I wish you well for the future. I hope we can talk to you both uh, on the platform again in the future. Thank you so much Thank for you your so time. Much. Cheers. Uh, Hannah Habibi and Marsha Marks from the uh, organisation Iranian Women in New Zealand. And as they said, there is a, it's not an uprising, it's a revolution. It does appear that the Ra Iranian regime, while playing some lip service and disbanding certain organisations, is killing people, um, executing people who have protested, thousands and thousands of people in prison, forcibly protesting what, and I love that term, uh, the gender apartheid that is practised uh, in Iran.